the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so glad to see you all out there today. And everyone who will be watching the video, we greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. This is Pastor Leroy Carter, your servant and your friend. I love the Lord with all my heart, and I thank God for counting me worthy of this calling. I praise God for counting me worthy of blessing you with the word of God, for, for entrusting me with this great treasure, the gospel. And so uh, I give it freely to you. Praise, I mean freely. We're not asking for any money. We're not asking for anything. Freely you receive, freely you give. And we just reach out to the whole world. We greet our friends in Kenya, Uganda, Nigeria. We greet our friends in Belgium, France, England. We greet our fr friends up in Canada, down in Mexico, Guyana, in South America. We greet our friends all over this nation. We greet you, Pastor Paul Bakley and Heidi Bakley and all of our students all across this nation. We thank God for this blessed opportunity to worship with you and to worship the Most High God and present a life-changing word. And so we thank God. Today, I, I feel so excited deep down in my sanctified soul, excited to start a new series. We've shared this with a lot of people on Facebook and in the social media, even through email. Uh, we're starting a series on why every believer ought to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Why every believer ought to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And if you're not a believer who's baptized in the Holy Ghost, I pray that you'll listen to this sermon and join with us for the next several weeks because God has given me the word. He wants to reach out to you to let you know he loves you. He cares about you, and he's got something greater for many of you than what you have already. You may say, well, I have Jesus. That's enough. Ladies and gentlemen, when you follow these messages, you'll see that there's more that God wants for you. And so we just praise God. We just bless you. Well, pastor in my church, they don't preach about the Holy Ghost. Well, invite your bishop to join us next week. Invite your pastor to join us next week. We preach the word of God, ladies and gentlemen. What we present to you is the word of God and the anointing, the Holy Spirit anointing. His direction is to present to you uh, a series of messages to help build up the body of Christ. This is to help you. This is to encourage you. This is to let you know that God is on your side Many of you are going through, you've got issues, you've got struggles. Satan's got your number. He knows which chain to tug on. He knows which bell to ring. He knows how to paralyze and shut you down. But we believe that after this series of messages, amen, you're going to keep the devil under your feet and you're going to help others to enter into the freedom of the spirit-filled life. And so we praise God. We thank God. We thank God. You might have come up in a denomination where they did not believe in the Holy Ghost. Oh, so sad, so sad. The millions of Christians who have been deceived and, and who have been uh, punished by preachers not preaching about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We preach the whole gospel, ladies and gentlemen, from Genesis to Revelation. We preach the whole Logos, the whole word of God. We don't leave anything out. Because God wants you to be filled with his spirit. He wants you to receive all that he has for you. And so we thank God. We give a shout out to our friends. Hey, cats, we give a shout out to you. We give a shout out to Roger Pond. We give a shout out to Ted Rowe. We give a shout out to my son, Wes. We give a shout out to my daughters. We give a shout out to people all over this nation. Hey, Bishop Elijah Wena in Kenya, we give a shout out to you. Bishop Davis in Jamaica, we give a shout out to you. We give a shout out to uh, all of our friends all over the world. This is Pastor Leroy. I love you. And I pray that 
what we share today will be a blessing to you. So we, we want to invite you for the next 30 minutes just to gather around your cell phone or on your computer, or if you're watching uh, live via Facebook, hallelujah, praise God. And for those of you who are watching this anointing on the YouTube channel, as we archive our lessons on YouTube, the anointing is still on these messages. You can you can uh, play them over and over again. Hey, Tammy Nichols, I see you out there. Glory to God. So ladies and gentlemen, let us pray and let's trust the Holy Spirit to guide us in the direction he wants us to go today. Father God, we thank you. We bless you, praise you, and honor you. Lord, I consider it an honor and a privilege to preach your word today. I thank you for saving me. Thank you for filling me with your Holy Spirit. Thank you for giving me a charge to keep and a God to glorify. Lord God, now we have an audience, God, who is excited about you, who love you. They want more, God, and I want you to give them more. I'm asking that you give them more, God. I'm asking that you open their hearts, God. Help them to open their hearts and receive your word and your blessings. Let these next several weeks of ministry be life-changing, God, as you speak to the people. Help them to receive. Help them to believe your word. And, Father, fill each and every one with your Holy Spirit. Fill them again and again and again with the Holy Ghost. God, you're the strength, the power that we need. We cannot make it without you. We are so empty without you, Lord God. We hurt. Many are sick, God. We can't make it without you, but we know you, Lord God. Hallelujah. You said greater is he in us than he that's in the world. And so, Father, we just praise you. We bind Satan by the authority of the name and blood of Jesus. Lord God, we cast down all vain imaginations. And Lord, let your word go forth with power, demonstration in the Holy Spirit. Oh, God, heal today. Stretch forth your mighty hand. Heal, save, and deliver Raise up the church, God. We pray that you raise up a mighty army of prophets who would take this nation and the nations for Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let the church say amen. Turn with me once again to our scripture, Ezekiel chapter 37. Or download Ezekiel chapter 37. We're going to go there. We're going to look at what the scripture says. And we're going to hear what thus saith the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. And so Holy Spirit, we invite you to guide us today. In Jesus name. Ezekiel wrote in the 37th chapter. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. Remember that Ezekiel was carried out into a valley that was full of dry bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. What a description, ladies and gentlemen, what a description. Ezekiel is carried out by the Holy Spirit into the valley of dry bones. He said they were, there were very many of them. They were scattered and they were very dry. And he said unto me, meaning God, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, oh, Lord God, thou knowest. I want you to listen with all your heart, ladies and gentlemen, to this message. God asked Ezekiel, son of man, can these bones live? And Ezekiel said, Thou knowest, thou knowest, Lord. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. Listen to this church. Listen to this Facebook family. God said, I will cause breath to enter into you. Listen to this church. The church needs breath. The church needs breath. God wants to breathe upon you 
today. Listen, listen, don't turn off this channel. Stick with me. Church, you may not have been taught about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but God wants to breathe on you. Verse six, and I will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord. God says, I'm going to put muscles on you. I'm going to put flesh on you. I'm going to cover you with skin and I'm going to breathe breath upon you and you shall live. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll say, well, that's Old Testament. Yes, we preach the whole Lagos, the whole word of God. The Old Testament is preparation for the New Testament. God wants to do something with you, church. He wants to do something with you. He wants to do something with me. And so Ezekiel said, so I prophesy. Hey, you prophets out there, you teachers, you apostles, you evangelists. Ezekiel said, so I prophesied as I was commanded. Ladies and gentlemen, when we do what God calls us to do, no matter what people may think, no matter what they may say, they may throw rocks at you, they may shoot at you, they may firebomb your heart, but when you do what thus saith the Lord, God will bless. I guarantee you, he will bless. So I prophesied, Ezekiel said, as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, listen, there was a noise Ezekiel said, as I prophesied, there was a noise and behold, a shaking and the bones came together bone to bone. And when I beheld lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. He said, I prophesied. I prophesied as the Lord gave me. Some of you prophets out, prophets out there wonder why you're prophesying, what you're prophesying. Some of you preachers wonder, why did the Lord tell me to preach this? But you just trust in the Lord. God's got the plan. He said, I know the plans that I have for you. Amen. Just believe God. Just trust God and obey him. Then he said unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Ladies and gentlemen, God told the preacher, preach to the wind, preach to the wind. Now, now, you know, you know, I see a whole lot of folks on my on my morning walks out on the trail. And I see folks talking to trees and talking to animals. But I haven't seen anybody prophesying to the wind. God told Ezekiel, prophesy to the wind, preach to the wind, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. God told Ezekiel, prophesy to the wind, preach to the winds, so that the wind can breathe the breath of God from the four corners of the earth upon these dry bones. Ladies and gentlemen, God had a concern about those dry bones. Ezekiel said there were very many of them. And they were very dry. And the scripture says in Ezekiel 37, verse 10, So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Ladies and gentlemen, Ezekiel said, I obeyed God, and I prophesied upon those dry bones. I prophesied unto the wind, and the breath of God came upon those dead, dry bones, and they rose up and they lived, ladies and gentlemen. Now look at verse 11. Look at verse 11. Then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. These bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dry and our hope is lost. We are cut off from our parts. Ladies and gentlemen, those dry bones in the valley of dry bones, God said, this is the house of Israel. We're cut off. We're separated. We're scattered. We're dry. We're dead. Well, preacher, what's that have to do? What's that have to do with us today? This is 2018. What does this scripture have to do with us? Ladies and gentlemen, it has a lot to do with us. God said to tell you, these dry bones represent the church. These dry bones represent the church. 
of the Lord Jesus Christ. These dry bones represent First Baptist, Second Baptist, Third Baptist, First Pentecostal, Second Pentecostal, First Lutheran, First Episcopalian. This, these bones represent the Roman Catholic Church. These bones represent Christians, ladies and gentlemen. These bones represent Christians in America. These bones represent Christians in Canada. These bones represent the church in Africa, the church in Europe, the church in South America. These bones represent the church all over the world. God said, my people are dry. They are scattered. They have been separated. They are disconnected. They are frustrated. They are confused. They hear different voices. They're paralyzed. Satan has paralyzed my church. God said, preach, preach a series on why the church needs to be baptized in the Holy Ghost, why every believer needs to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Ladies and gentlemen, God is looking down from heaven. He's looking down at heaven at the church, and he sees this church over here, this church over there, this church over here, this church over there, they don't come together. They don't love one another. They don't fellowship with one another. This church is trying to do this thing. This church is trying to do this thing. This church has joined the Republican Party. This church has joined the Democratic Party. They're divided. They're scattered. They're separated. They're doing their own little thing, and they're not doing their will. God is looking down from heaven and saying the church is not the church that I prophesied on Caesarea Philippi. Well, Jesus said on Caesarea Philippi, on this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus said on this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. But look at the church, ladies and gentlemen. Look at the church, ladies and gentlemen. Hell looks like it's prevailing. Satan looks like he's winning. He's got this church paralyzed. They no longer preach the gospel. They play bingo on Sunday afternoon. He's got this church. They don't preach anymore. They have raffles at the church on Sunday. They have got this church. They go to the movies on Sunday. They show cartoons on Sunday morning. He've got this. We've got this church. They don't fellowship with others. They don't love one another. They don't feed the hungry. They don't help the poor. They're not praying for the sick. They're looking down on people. They're looking down. They think they're better than others. Some just don't want to be a part of anything. We've got people in the church. They're dead. They go to church. They sit there. They listen, but they don't understand. God says, these dry bones, son of man represent the church, the new Israel. God told Ezekiel, these bones represent Israel and the church is the new Israel. God is looking at his church. Jesus is grieved. He's shedding tears. His heart is broken. Jesus' heart is broken because the church that he hung on the cross for bled and died, the church that he gave his life for, the church that he said, you shall receive power after which the Holy Ghost has come. He's looking at the church and the church has turned its back on him. Pastors don't preach the gospel anymore. Pastors don't get along with one another. Church people don't want to get along with one another. Where's the fellowship? How many people are calling on the Lord? They have got denominations my friends, who don't even believe in prayer. They don't believe in the power of prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, God is grieved. He's grieved. He's grieved. His heart is broken when he looks at the church, when he looks at Satan overcoming the world, taking over the world, when he looks at the number of sick, the number of terminally ill, the number of people who are paralyzed, people who are uh, spiritually arthritic. They are locked down and locked up and cannot move. They're bound by sin. When he looks at the lesbian church, the gay church, when he looks at the same-sex marriage church, when he looks at churches where the pastor is a man and the first lady is a man, God is grieved, ladies and gentlemen. But God still loves us, and he's reaching out. He's reaching out. 
He's reaching out through this preacher. He's reaching out through other preachers. He said, son of man, can these dry bones live? Can the church live? Ladies and gentlemen, it grieves God's heart to see people playing church. People who are puffed up and proud. People who are very proud. You can't teach them anything. They know everything. People who don't want to hear the truth. But God is calling the church to task, ladies and gentlemen. He's calling the church to task. I want you to picture yourself. No matter who you are, where you are, picture yourself from the perspective of Ezekiel 37. Picture yourself. You're an ankle bone. You're all dried out. Your friends don't come to visit you anymore. Your family's shaking their head at you. Your money's all gone. Uh, uh, you're, you're 70 years old and have no joy. You grumble and complain. Or you're 30 years old and you got a drug habit. You're 45 years old and you divorce. Uh, you're, you're, you're 50 years old and looking for work, can't get a job. And you go to church and uh, you hear a message about Jesus. It doesn't penetrate. Something's wrong, ladies and gentlemen. There's a disconnection. Picture yourself as a dry bone. You and I, we're there in that valley that Ezekiel said, sees in that 37th chapter. You might be an ankle bone. You might be an arm bone. You might be an elbow. You might be a neck bone. You're not connected to the right bone. The ankle bone cannot connect with the neck bone. And the neck bone cannot connect with the elbow bone. We're out of place. Seems like the church is all confused, scattered, weak, lost its power. What has happened to the church, ladies and gentlemen? Jesus said, on this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus' word will not return unto him void. Only if people don't believe. If people don't believe Jesus, he cannot perform what he said he will do. Jesus hung and bled and died on the cross. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And yet we can't forgive our neighbor for offending us. Jesus said, you shall receive power after which the Holy Ghost has come. But ladies and gentlemen, we don't have power. The devil's got us on the run. This should not be. We ought to be taking the offense. We ought to be charging the gates of hell. The gates of hell shall not prevail against us. We ought to be speaking the word and communities repent. We ought to speak the word and the nightclub shut down. We ought to speak the word and the gay and the lesbians go straight. We ought to speak the word and same-sex marriage folks repent. We ought to speak the word and preachers preach the word, not their favorite dissertation. We ought to speak the word and there ought to be love in our families, in our households, on our jobs. We ought to speak the word and demons flee. We ought to speak the word of God and bodies get healed. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the church Jesus prophesied on at Caesarea Philippi. But what has happened? The church has turned its back on God. America has turned its back on God. England has turned its back on God. We follow our leaders. If our leaders say we will not follow God, then we follow the leaders. Ladies and gentlemen, God is looking for a people who will stand up and be counted, who will stand up for Jesus, who will stand on the word of God. We, we need people who, like Esther said, if I perish, I perish. I'm going to see the king. We need some king seekers today. Come on, somebody. We need some king seekers. We should not be called the church of Jesus Christ. We have his powerful name, yet we're waddling in sin and despair. There's no power in our midst. Sick are getting sicker. The people are dying. There's no, uh, we're not casting out the demons. We're not using the authority that God has given us. Something's wrong, ladies and gentlemen. And we see what is wrong as we look at the valley of dry bones. There is a disconnection. 
There was no connection with one another. And there was no connection with the Holy Spirit. And so God told Ezekiel to prophesy, prophesy. And God is telling us to prophesy, preach the word, preach the word, preach it. God, when I preached this last week, preach it again. Preach it until they get it. Preach the word, preach the word, make it plain, make it pure and plain. Preach the word until they believe. And when they believe, when they believe, when they hear it and believe, then God can do something. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to stop being so stubborn and so stiff necked and so rebellious. Nobody can preach to us. Only certain preachers can preach to some of you. Ladies, and you shut out other preachers. I, I look on TV and I, I know a lot of my friends, uh, they don't want white preachers preaching to them because they hate white folks. I got a lot of other friends. They don't want black preachers preaching to them. They hate black folks. Ladies and gentlemen, this hatred thing is of the devil. It comes straight from the pit of hell. God can use anyone he wants to, to proclaim his gospel. And if men and women will not obey him, the rocks will cry out. The trees will preach the gospel. The jackasses will preach the gospel. But it's up to you to hear the word of God and believe the word of God. God said in his word this day, if you will harden not your heart, do not harden your hearts as in the provocation. Today, believe, believe. God wants to change your life today. God wants to deliver you today. God wants to remove that sickness today. God wants to remove that sin today. But you've got to hear the word of God and you've got to repent. We've got to repent, ladies and gentlemen, from the White House to my house. We've got to repent for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've got to repent, uh, big uh, mega church. We've got to repent, storehouse, storefront church. We have got to repent from the pulpit to the door. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. God is looking for a people who will repent and call upon his name and believe him and believe him. God is looking for people who will get back into his word, study to show yourself approved unto him, workmen who needeth not to be ashamed. God is looking for people who will say, I need the Holy Ghost. We ought to stop blaspheming the Holy Spirit and talking negatively about him. We ought to stop talking the dumb stuff about the Holy Spirit because we don't know uh, uh, what you don't know will hurt you. You need to search the scriptures, find out what God says about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's more than speaking in tongues. The baptism of the Holy Ghost supersedes speaking in tongues. God wants to give you gifts to help change your situation, change your world. We'll talk about tongues later on in this series. And we'll also talk about other gifts. Prophecy, helps, administration, laying hands on the sick, casting out demons. We're talking about the power of God that God wants to live in every one of us. We're talking about rivers of living water being released in everyone who believes in God. There's no excuse, ladies and gentlemen, for the church to be so pitifully, pathetically weak in America or in your nation. There is no excuse. The only reason why God cannot do what he wants to do is because we do not believe him. And every one of us needs to repent. I'm talking to you proud spirits out there. You don't need the Holy Ghost. I'm talking to you proud preachers, and I know some of you, you've told me, Pastor Carter, you can come and preach at my church, but you leave that Holy Spirit mess out there. You need to repent, Pastor. You need to repent for blaspheming the Holy Spirit. I pray to God to have mercy on you. I pray to God to open your eyes. I pray to God to circumcise the foreskin of your heart and deliver you. You can't make it without the Holy Ghost. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't care what kind of budget your church has. I don't care what kind of job you have. You may be swimming in millions of dollars. But if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you are lost. 
There's no way you can get to heaven without the Holy Ghost. I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking to somebody. I pray that you'll listen. Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and sup with him and live with him and he with me. Jesus wants to enter into every one of us in the person of the Holy Spirit. He wants to, us to pray to him, listen to his voice, have cool walks in the evening with him, morning walks with him, get our direction from him. And we get our direction when we get filled with the Holy Ghost, when we honor the Holy Spirit, when we honor the word of God, Jesus said, it's expedient that I go away, but I will send the comforter. Ladies and gentlemen, he wants to send the comforter to you and me. Why reject Jesus's desire and wish? Why repudiate his word with unbelief? Jesus wants to give us the Holy Ghost baptism. Well, you may say, well, I'm scared of this Holy Ghost thing. Well, uh, with fear and trembling, work out your soul salvation. Praise God. God is God. He's awesome. And if he says he wants you to be filled with the Holy Ghost, be filled with the Holy Ghost. He says in Ephesians, in Ephesians uh, 5, 18, and be not drunk with wine in which is excess, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. We're only going to take a few more minutes with this. Oh, I know you're having a ball living your life the way you want because you're your own boss. You're the captain of your soul. You're the master of your fate. But ladies and gentlemen, God did not make you to be the captain of your soul. To be the captain of your soul is of the devil. God made you to worship him. Psalm 139.4 says we're fearfully and wonderfully made that we might praise him. So let us humble ourselves and call upon the name of the Lord. Let's get back into studying our Bible. Let's get back to prayer and worship. Let's get back to basics. This is back to basics ministry. We're calling people back to basics. The church has gotten way out there beyond the black hole. They've gone off the deep end. Come back, church. Come back to God. Come back to basics. Come back to your first love and do the first works. Imagine yourself in the valley of dry bones. You're an ankle bone. You're just a dead, dry ankle bone. You're trusting in your own ability. You're trusting in your degree, your education, your smarts, your street smarts. That won't get it. That won't get it. God put you on this planet for a purpose, ladies and gentlemen. Fulfill your purpose. Return to God. Humble yourself. What's that mean, Pastor? Humble myself. Repent. Repent. Say, God, I've sinned against you. I've been walking in my own understanding. I've been walking in my own will. I've been doing my own thing. I, I, haven't, I don't want anybody to teach me. Any, I don't even want any bother out of people. That's sin, ladies and gentlemen. That's pride. God put us here to fellowship with him and to love one another. God uh, birthed the church at Caesarea Philippi so that we can be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. But if you're locked in your little corner, suffering from spiritual arthritis, and you can't move, you won't even get up on Sunday and open your Bible. You won't even get on your knees and pray. You've got spiritual arthritis, yet you call yourself a Christian. There's a disconnection somewhere. You're disconnected from God, and you're disconnected from God's people. And God wants to raise up an army, ladies and gentlemen, because your nation, believe it or not, the United States of America, your nation, Kenya, whatever your nation is, is crumbling around you. Satan is taking your nation step by step, precinct by precinct, politician by politician, leader by leader. And yet the church is still selling chicken dinners and pig feet dinners and having 
hoo howls or woo woo parties, playing bingo and watching cartoons, and the devil's taken over. It's time for the church to wake up. It's time for these dry bones to live. It's time for church people, all of you dry bones, every one of us, to connect with one another. It's time for us to stop saying the black church and the white church, the Hispanic church. It's time for us to put aside those labels and say we are born again by the Spirit of God. We're the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's time to us get filled with his spirit so, he, so that he can lead us to become the people he's calling us to be. Praise God. Hey, dry bones, God has more for you. Hey, you dry bones, God has more for you. Oh, well, Pastor Carter, you offend me calling me a dry bone. Hey, dry bones, God has more for you. Hey, dry bones, I'm right there with you. He's got more for me too. I don't want to be dry. I don't want to be dry. I repent for being dry. I repent. I refuse to leave this life being a dry bone, ladies and gentlemen. I refuse. I absolutely refuse to leave this life as a dry bone. If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or song, if I can tell somebody he's traveling wrong, then my living shall not be in vain. Then my living shall not be in vain. Then my living shall not be in vain. If I can help somebody, come on somebody, as I pass along, God didn't put me in this world so that I could have a bless me party. God didn't put me in this world so that everything revolves about Leroy. God put me in this world to worship him and praise him. God gave me a light. I'm going to let my light shine. I might be an old man, but I ain't dead yet. Come on, somebody. I might be an old man, but I ain't dead yet. I may have been sitting around in the valley of dry bones for a long time, but I'm going to get new life in me. Hey, Tammy Nichols, I'm going to get some new life in me. I'm going to let my light shine. I'm going to ask the Lord God, fill me, Lord, with the Holy Ghost. Fill me again and again and again and again and again and again. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Oh, God, fill me. Fill me with your love and your power, and your anointing, Lord, so that I can show everyone the love of God, so I can love my brothers and sisters, so I can rise up and connect with the body of Christ. Fill me, Lord God. Fill your people, God, so that we can connect and be the church that God is calling for in these last and evil days. The world is going to hell. The world is going there quickly. And the church is laying around pitifully, pathetically, dried out, doing dried out things. Get rid of that dry agenda, Bishop. Get rid of that dry agenda, church. We know you've already mapped out your agenda for the next year, but seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon the name of the Lord and say, Lord, what is your agenda? What is your agenda? What is your agenda? Ladies and gentlemen, I refuse to leave this life without being baptized in the Holy Ghost. That's, I mean, that's just my position. That is just my position. I refuse to, be leave, to leave this life not being filled with the Holy Ghost. And I refuse to leave this life not understanding what the Holy Ghost baptism is all about and who it's for and how to receive it. I refuse to leave this life without teaching people how to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. I refuse to leave this life without prophesying and preaching the gospel. Hallelujah. I refuse to leave this life without laying hands on some sick folks and they get healed in the name of Jesus. I refuse to leave this life without casting out demons in the name of Jesus. I refuse. I refuse. I intend with all my heart, Lord Jesus, to be all that you want me to be. And I intend to tell the church, to teach the church how to do your will. 
Oh God, I praise you because why? 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 Because Lord Jesus, you died on the cross for me. You died on the cross for us. You gave your life for us. You did not die on the cross for us to be pitiful drunks, drug dealers, drug addicts, whoremongers, adulterers. You did not die on the cross for us to die in lesbianism or homosexuality. You died so that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. That we might have it more abundantly. And so, ladies and gentlemen, in the next several weeks at the Back to Basics Online Church, we will be preaching on a series of God Has More for You, a.k.a. God wants every believer to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I pray that you will join me in the next several weeks. We will answer your questions as the Lord gives the answers. Who's the baptism of the Holy Ghost for? What is the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Who is the Holy Ghost? What are the gifts of the Spirit? How do I get the gifts of the Spirit? How do I activate the gifts of the Spirit? What is speaking in tongues? Is tongues all there is? What else does God have for me? We're going to talk about the baptism and the difference that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is going to make in this country. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to preach about what the what difference the baptism of the Holy Ghost is going to do in America. One of us can put a thousand to flight. One spirit filled person can put a thousand to flight. Two can put 5,000. Ladies and gentlemen, when the church gets this message and the church receives by faith the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you're going to see God move in this nation and in your nation like never before. You're going to see people coming to the Lord. You're going to see people getting saved. You're going to see the church come alive. There's going to be such an anointing on this nation and the nation's why? Because God is ready. He's ready. I say he's ready. He's ready. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on me. Get ready, church. Get ready, church. Get ready, church. Get ready, church. Get your heart ready. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Get excited. Get excited about this ministry. Get excited about what God has for you because the best mm, 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 is yet to come. I say the best is yet to come. You ain't seen nothing yet. Tyrone Kilp, Kirkpatrick, you ain't seen nothing yet. You've been waiting on the Lord to move. You want to know what is my ministry? Lord, what do you have for me? You just wait on the Lord. The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I'm going to wait on the Lord. I'm going to be like Job. Everybody quit on Job. They gave up on him. They said, Job, you're through. You're finished. Your ministry's through. Look at you. Your wife has cursed God. Your children are gone. Everything you had is gone. You need to curse God and die. Look at you, Job. But Job said, oh, no. Oh, no. I believe that my Redeemer will come. I'm going to wait on the Lord. I'm going to wait on the Lord. I pray, ladies and gentlemen that you'll wait on the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I pray that you'll read your scriptures. Start reading, start reading uh, scriptures such as Ezekiel 37 and read Acts chapter two. Read Joel 2, 28, 29. Read Isaiah 40, 29 to 31. Read Ephesians 5, 18. Read 1 Corinthians 12, 13 and 14, that's all about the Holy Ghost anointing and the gifts of the Spirit and how they operate. Read, read, study to show yourself approved. And then, then, then open your heart. Open your heart. Open your heart, ladies and gentlemen. Open your heart. And at some point in this ministry, hallelujah. At some point in this ministry, cats, God's going to send help. 
for all of your intercessors. At some point in this ministry, Tammy Nichols, God's going to send help to your friends in Ohio. At some point in this ministry, Bishop Elijah, God's going to send help to Kenya because God is going to pour out his spirit. His spirit. And people are going to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Ladies and gentlemen, I feel the power. I feel the presence of the Lord. I praise God for the anointing. The anointing destroys the yoke. So raise up your antenna and seek the Lord and begin that and asking God now, God, fill me with the Holy Spirit. While on others thou art calling, Lord Jesus, do not pass me by. I want you to get you an attitude. I want you to get you a bless God attitude that I will not leave this earth without getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Ladies and gentlemen, the church, the church, the church has been missing out on the glorious power of God. We've been busy playing church. We've been busy uh, uh, playing church in our little churchy games and, and, and refusing God and denying God and shutting God out. But church, it's time to wake up. Wake up. Church, God sees you. You're like a valley of dry bones. Toe bone won't connect with the foot bone. Foot bone looking for the ankle bone and the ankle bone looking for the heel bone and the heel bone looking for the leg bone and the leg bone looking for the knee bone and the knee bone looking for the thigh bone. The thigh bone can't find the hip bone and the hip bone can't find the back bone and the back bone can't find the shoulder bone. Shoulder bone looking for the neck bone and the neck bone looking for the skull. I guarantee you, ladies and gentlemen, as God is God, he's not a man that he should lie. God is going to pour out his spirit. He's going to do a new thing. I want you to get in it. I want you to receive. God wants you to receive. So be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Hey, well, I know some of you are crying. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Look here in the next couple of weeks. Satan's going to try to fight you with a whole lot to try to prevent you from getting what God wants for you. But you just press. You press. You tell the devil to get under your feet. You make up your mind right now. I'm going to get what God has for me. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for what you have done. I thank you for what you are doing. And I thank you for what you're going to do. Now, God, in the name of Jesus, get the attention of your people and cause your people to prepare themselves for a mighty move of the Holy Spirit. Cause people to hunger and thirst after righteousness and to seek to be filled. And Lord God, praise God. I thank you that many of your listeners will not have to wait. They can receive the Holy Ghost today just by asking and believing just like they asked for salvation and believed in their heart, they can get the Holy Ghost. And Holy Ghost, breathe upon the people. Fill them. Fill them. Fill them. And we thank you, Father. And we love you. And we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. Well, let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Praise God. Um, if you have any questions, call me at... My number, 404-205-1101. Send me an email, LeroyCarter69 at yahoo.com. I'll be glad to answer your questions and be glad to be a blessing to you. Get in